Good evening everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's your pal Matt and behind me this grand structure is the Coronado Springs Grandestino Tower. Yes, I am here at the Disney World Coronado Springs Resort and I've got a treat for you all. We are going to take a tour of this hotel. You know, I started thinking that my Swan and Dolphin Hotel tour and review is still doing very well even past a year later so I thought you know I wanted to do more of these and I kind of got sidetracked a little bit so I thought let's add these back into the vlogs now because the parks are insanely busy because Magic Kingdom's got their Halloween parties going on uh, Halloween Horror Nights is a absolute crap show tonight it's a Friday night all the other parks Epcot's parking lot was full when I drove by you know, you've got Animal Kingdom that closes at 7 at night, so the only options now are Hollywood Studios and Epcot. And it's just, that's the one thing that really sucks about Disney's park hours. Is it sh I've said this before, but it shoves all the park guests into two parks, which is terrible for the value for your dollar. So, I decided, you know, while, we're, while they got the parties and that going on and the parks are kind of stupid right now, let's go do some hotel tours. There's so many of them. And there's a lot to share. There's so many uncovered, really cool details here. So, without wasting any more time, let's get our ass over to this hotel and check it out. Welcome to Disney's Coronado Springs, everybody. Let's get started. As we walk in, this is uh, Coronado Springs Disney World, not uh, the uh, Coronado, California, where the U.S. Naval Special Warfare Center is, the Phil H. Bucklew Center. Uh, that would be cool though to see where the U.S. Navy SEALs train. I would love to take a tour of that place. Um, what brought that into my mind is on my way over here from work I was listening to uh, Don Shipley. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, he's a retired U.S. Navy SEAL. He busts all the phony Navy SEALs out there. He's got thousands of videos. If you ever want to watch some entertaining stuff, Don Shipley, Buds, former Buds131 on YouTube. But anyway, Let's get started here at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. So this is kind of the entrance of the Grandestino Tower area here at Coronado Springs. This is a beautiful resort, man. The architecture here is stunning. The tower's hit and miss with a lot of people. Some love it, some hate it. I'm going to show you, though, the entire resort because up until a few years ago, this tower didn't even exist. This was added in more recent times. I'll show you, we'll take a walk and I'll show you where the main lobby used to be and kind of how the resort used to be laid out until this came along. But that all the way up top where that ornamental iron metalwork is, that's a restaurant up there. So this is the main lobby of the hotel. I didn't film walking in because there must be a big convention or something here and there's a bunch of greeters by the door and I really, really, really don't like, you know, putting a camera up in front of people's faces. So decided to wait till I got to the balcony here. This lobby is two levels and I love the architecture in here. It's got a lot of obviously Spanish influence. There's a really good pic uh, painting of Walt down there. And as we come around here, you can see a lot of the design and artwork in here. One of my favorite elements of the lobby is this lantern wall. I love this. I would love to recreate this at home. This is stunning with the lanterns and everything. And from down here on the stairwell, you can kind of see there's the upper, upper level where you come in and check in. But I mean, look at this. This is really done on a grand scale and what i really love at christmas time is right from this big window down here there's a christmas tree that pretty much goes almost floor to ceiling covers that whole window but this is the new lobby this is this is obviously the one where you would come in checking in now to coronado and i'll show you the old lobby where things used to take place so the one nice thing about this tower is it connects all the way over to the old resort so that's where we're heading. So this continues all the way around and right through those doors down there we'll enter into the old lobby where you used to come in. 
here it is. The tall vaulted ceilings. Right here, this used to be the check-in desks right here. But look at how welcoming this was to walk into. And this is what they talk about, the high beam ceilings. That's actually not wood, that's painted to look like uh, heavy timber. Once again, cost saving. It's that the Disney trickery. This was the original drop off. This is the view you used to get walking into Coronado Springs. This was the original lobby. So you come through here, you have Coronado Springs and you have the fountain right here. Which is made to look like you're in a, in a courtyard in Mexico. And then there's the reference statue of uh, Panchito singing. All right, so it's gonna get dark soon, so we're gonna go outside and tour the outer property. And of course, there's tons of Halloween merch out now. What's crazy is it won't be much longer that we put in Christmas stuff out. So yes, yeah, so this is the old lobby, and check this out. This is all hand-painted up here. A lot of people don't even realize this is here. They just walk in and just totally ignore this. This bridge here in the middle connects to a restaurant called Three Bridges. Apparently this was added a while back and used to not be here. These bridges are really nice to have because as you can see, this entire resort is absolutely freaking humongous. And if you wanted to go to that side of the resort over that way, you had to walk. Not that walking's bad, walking's good, but it's a hike to get around this resort, especially to the pool. The pool is over on the other side. And so, if you're staying over here, you would have to walk completely around the entire lagoon to get there. And this is all man-made. So this first area, this represents the, the different theming of this resort. All right. So this is the casitas, and you can see by the architecture. Again, they did research projects on and everything on this kind of stuff. They went in, even down to the fencing. You know, look at the roof lines. And over here you have the roof with the Spanish tile. And then in the center courtyards are the fountains. And in keeping up with tradition, a lot of the courtyards here at Coronado do have fountains in the center. So once again, to kind of go back on the casitas, these were inspired by the urban areas of Mexico and the American Southwest. These are uh, all interspersed with colorful plazas and fountains and palm-shaded courtyards. Which, there you go, everything's right there. And if you walk through here, there's yet another fountain in through here. Honestly, if you could sleep with your windows open and have a window on this uh, room on this courtyard, hear that fountain run all night, that'd be very peaceful. So as you go into Casitas 2 here, there's another courtyard with a fountain. This one's really, really well done here. Check this out. I mean, look how peaceful this is in here. I mean, is this not beautiful? And then these are all the different walkways to get to the different areas of the resort. The one thing I really love about the Disney World resorts, all of them, is you could, God, screech owl, you could spend a, a better part of a day or more walking around and touring these resorts and looking at all the different elements and architecture and design. Coming upon the next part of Casitas, we're going into Casitas 3. There's yet another fountain up ahead in the courtyard. I mean, how gorgeous is this? They even have the, uh, it's the tile in the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
then over in this courtyard, they have the grandest fountain of them all. One of the swimming pools. The one thing about all the resorts here at Disney World is they all have one major, major pool you can swim in. When I say major, it's got all the fun slides, loud music, entertainment. And then they have these quiet pools like this. And they're scattered all throughout the resort. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to as we walk around, the swimming pools are going to change in how they're themed and designed. One of the other things I wanted to explain to you while we were doing this, they talk about the tunnel form construction when they built this place. If you look at the walls, everything's concrete and everything is pretty much seamless. Just like obviously this is stucco on the outside here, but if you could peel this away, this would all this would likely be all just a concrete, a big sheet of concrete. And what they do is they form all of these shapes, hence the word tunnel, and then they they the concrete they, they stand it up pour the concrete in and when it hardens they remove it and there you have it and you can pour a ton a ton of concrete and get a lot of construction done very fast using that method the other benefit to the tunnel form construction this goes back to my architectural days is it provides more of a watertight seal because it, you're you're pouring uh, long forms you have less joints and you can actually pour a ton of, how do you want to say, a ton of walls or door frame openings or whatever it is you need. You can set that, that goal for the day and they say, hey, I need, I need you to pour me, you know, let's say 50 walls and 35 columns and say 35 arches. And, and what else you would need. And basically they start doing that and you, you get all of that poured out and then it's delivered. And then basically everything just kind of kind of goes into place. And it is very cost effective, extremely cost effective. It goes very fast. And I said the biggest thing is because a lot of it is seamless so you have a lot less chance for leaks. This is the casitas. We're about ready to leave this area. We're on the furthest reach of the property. Three bridges is straight across the Lago restaurant and then the Grandestino Tower in the background. As we move around the resort too, I, you can, can't help but notice the music. I believe the music changes as you move from uh, one, one area to the next. And eventually we're going to work our way over toward the dig site, which is where the pool is. That is a really neat themed swimming pool area, I must tell you. You're in for a treat if you haven't seen that yet. How about that night sky, huh? I tell you what, Florida sunsets are some of the best ever. One of the idea I had while I was out here walking around is I think I added it into my list of vlogs and things to do in the very near future. And this would have to be split up into a couple of vlogs because there'd be so many, but I think it'd be fun, is to tour the Disney World resorts and even Universal and go check out all of the unique fountains that are featured throughout all of the resorts. That would be a cool little project, I think. I'm a big fan of fountains, if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> fountains and moving water. Big fan of it. All right, everybody, we're moving on. So here's our last one. This is Casitas 5, okay? And after that, we have the parking lot here and a little bit of a break in the action. So everything's not rammed in together. So now it's like we're on the road. Okay? And now we're heading to the Ranchos area. So here we are. I got on this flag. So check this out. We're still in the same resort, if you can believe it. This is the Ranchos area. Now, like we just talked about earlier, this is designed to appeal or suggest the more arid country rancher farmhouse parts of the region with a small stream or arroyo tumbling over a rocky stream bed. Um, and this is the one where Mark Cole wanted to make sure that the vegetation they selected for this area would really grow next to a river in the same region of Mexico. So everything that's selected here was meant to be authentic, meaning if you're going to find it here, you're going to find it growing next to an actual riverbed in Mexico. But look at the, look at the change in the construction. I mean, it does. Look at these. They, look like, they do look like fancy farmhouses. This looks like something that you would see... Um, it's a far difference from the casitas. You got the Spanish tile roof 
right there, which I love that kind of construction, the you know, Spanish tile. That's one of the things I love about St. Augustine is its main influence in that whole area is Spanish architecture, which is one of my favorite forms of architecture. Just because of how it looks, it uses a lot of concrete, heavy timber. And then right here, here we go. I mean, look, look, at this. this is incredible. This is the Disney that I came to enjoy. Again, think about this. And then remember this when we tour that new Polynesian eyesore monstrosity that they're going to open up in, a, like I said, about two months. But how, how nice is this? And to go with theming, you know, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the Old West here. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going back to the period time, so got to have a place to, to hitch up the horse. Same with here. It would be like you're going to hitch up the horse. Now, the only thing I wish they would have done... Now, I don't know if they have done this in the past and they filled it in because it was too much to maintenance or it's always been like this, but I wish they would have actually had an actual stream or waterway going through here. But they have uh, rocks to uh, simulate it. As we move back this way, we'll see the, uh, the pool back here, and you'll see that's going to look totally different from the one we just saw. And we even got some cactus, too. Even the signage has changed to match the theming. Even the lighting is affixed to what would be like an old school power pole. That's how you have the pool lighting. And look how the pool is set up, how it's inlaid in with the rocks and everything. I don't want to get too close. There's people swimming. I'm just, I'm not like some of these live streamers, vloggers, where they'll just shove a camera into everybody's face and not care. I, especially when people are swimming in their bathing suits. I know I've commented on that before. Give people some privacy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on through the Ranchos area. Next stop will be the dig site, which is the main area for the big swimming pool for the resort. Actually, things are going to change a lot quick, more quicker than I thought. So... I'm going to show you this one. This is the last of the Ranchos buildings right here. This is on the far, far outer reach. As you can see, again, like the chimneys and the Spanish tile roofs. And again, the architecture, like a lot of the heavy timber. So as we move from this one, now we go right over here. And look how it all changes completely. These are considered the cabanas. And if you look, they are styled very similarly to like, like almost like beach cabanas. From the, wood, from the railings to the, the metal roof. And this continues all the way around to the rest of the resort. The pool will also be different for these two. So this is referenced early on when we first started reading. This is the lost city of Cibola. Or it's either Cibola or Chibola. But this is the dig site. This is the pool area. This is the gigantic play area. Like I said, every hotel and resort at Disney World has a main feature pool where it's the fancy of the fancy. It's got the water slides. They usually have a DJ. They have a lot of interactive uh, features and arcades, all kinds of stuff around here. Oh, and uh, hot tub and spas. So we're gonna take a look at this. You're in for a treat to see this. And then once we're done, we'll continue our way down the pathway around the cabanas. But can you hear the music? The music has changed. Even when you look off in the distance from here, it looks like where the main lobby used to be. Or it has the look like you're looking upon a city in Mexico in the distance. How cool is that? Right? 
One of the other points I, I, I forgot to make while we were inside, but I'm going to point back at the original lobby. They One of the things that helped them keep this Amata Resort is down to the fine details. They used real ceramic tile in high visibility areas, meaning places that you might be able to see up close or touch. And then in areas that you couldn't see so well, like things that were far away or high up, they would use more of a basically a, a fake ceramic tile. It's pretty cool. So a lot of the ceramic tiles are full, like some of the ones that are far out of reach are, are false, falsely finished ceramic. So it's not real. So they're saying like for every about 10,000 real ceramic tiles, there's about 5,000 of them that are fake. I'll see if we can't point one of those out when we get in there. But this, this is the entry to the pool. You know, and the music has changed again. <laughs> so here we are. Coronado Springs main resort pool, also known as the dig site. This is the 46-foot Mayan temple that were found that was found by the explorers as they were exploring this area. And this was also to serve as a ceremonial center for the lake, meaning this sits right in front of the man-made lake. So this is the main temple, the 46 foot tall temple, and this cascades down into the main swimming pool. And it was said that this water cascades down the temple steps into the lost city of, of Cibola's feature pool, which is the one behind me. And it said, uh, bas relief structures called stele have been carved on the pyramid, and then Mayan symbols are inlaid into the bottom of the 22 acre Lago Dorado Golden Lake. Uh, pool in the pool deck. So right here, you can actually see some of the some of the carvings. And here you have it. This comes all the way down to the swimming pool. They actually had to put more netting and stuff up right through there because actually there's been several reports and photo evidence on Facebook and every other social media source of kids climbing to the top of this thing. So I'm just glad that they put the net there and they didn't completely dismantle this. Or you know how Disney does. You know, oh, we can't have anybody getting hurt because, you know, crappy parents should be watching their kids. So I'm glad they kept this. They just put that netting up. But apparently what that kid did is he worked his way through those logs there. So now you can't do it. You'd have to pretty much make a uh, American Ninja Warrior type of stunt to get up there. So yeah, this goes into the pool. And you can see right through here, the blue down there in the bottom of the pool, those are some of the other carvings that are meant to be part of the theming of this pool. And right here, the water pours right in here and then empties out right in there, right in the pool. Walking around the pool, here's some more of those carvings that are, that are inlaid into the deck, pool deck. Like I said, people, people don't realize that <laughs> they don't even realize like the theming in that. Everybody just probably walks over this every day and didn't even notice it. Or you follow these stairs up and it goes to the water slide that empties down here right into the swimming pool. I've been on this water slide. It's very well themed as well. You go under a bunch of really cool like Mayan style uh, themed arches. If you can see that right there, they've got some animals perched at the top. They've got waterfalls that flow down into the, into the water slide. It's a really cool slide. And then here's the entire swimming pool complex, complete with the beautiful sunset. And then right in here is a little kid's splash pool. It's about two, uh, yeah, two feet deep, something like that. Really great place for the young ones. And then that is the pool area. And then we're going to enter out to the, or I'm sorry, exit out through the back. And we'll pick up where we were, where we left off on our tour. One of the other thing I want you to pay attention to is looking at the construction you see how everything is is shaped here look at the doors see how they're angled at about a 30 degree angle towards each other take a look at that and then when we go to some of the other resorts and do these tours take a look at the, at those as well i think you'll see a very familiar pattern and this is the area of the cabanas which true to theme has the beach 
and the hammocks, loungers. I mean, how nice of a view is that? Imagine coming out here right now, just taking a chill, have a drink in your hand, just looking out. Beautiful. One other thing I want you to pay attention to, remember the signage. Remember from all the way back when we started, casitas to rancheros and cabanas, it's the signs all change to, to represent the theming of the area they sit in. So now we're gonna head to the pool. And I love this swimming pool, and I'll explain why in a second. And there's nobody here, so I can film the pool. <laughs> It's the kidney bean shape. Everybody remember the kidney bean swimming pools? These were very well known when we used to travel on vacation when I was a kid. And all the Holiday Inns and uh, Best Westerns and all kind of other hotels that we used to stay at all had that kidney bean shaped pool. And one in particular was, there's two of them. There was one Holiday Inn near Sandusky, Ohio when we used to go to Cedar Point and there was another one right by Kings Island uh, near Cincinnati. And both those Holiday Inns had swimming pools that looked just like this. And I can just, it just has that feel of being in the pool and you can hear the exterior air conditioners <laughs> from the hotels, from the hotel rooms. I, it's just, I love this area. It has such, it brings back such good memories of my childhood. So, when I come back out of here and stay here again, I really want to stay in these areas right over here. Preferably one that would overlook this pool. That would be amazing. But yeah, this is my all-time favorite pool that isn't one of the main resort-themed pools. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out too. Um, the lighting. The lighting has changed again. Remember the other one was set up on like an old-school telephone pole. This is more like the wrought iron design. So whenever you come out to these Disney World resorts, take some time and just walk the resorts. There's so much to see. You could spend a day of your vacation, if not more, just walking these resorts and looking at everything that they have to offer. And if you want to look for things, you can write down what you hear in this video, in this vlog, and, and bring it with you. Or just play it along as you walk around the resort. I'll be your, I'll be your tour guide. And now back where we started, Trump Tower, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Grand Destino Tower. This was built more recently and added 545 rooms to the resort's already existing 1,840 rooms. So everything that we walked around and saw, uh, not including the tower which is behind me, the Tower Rapunzel, but there's 1,500 I'm sorry, 1,840 rooms in this resort, not including the 540 here. That's insane. And then the name of this tower was inspired by Destino, or the word Destiny, that began in 1945 as a seven-minute experimental animated short. It was a collaboration between Walt Disney and the famed surrealist painter Salvador Dali that was never completed during their lifetimes. It was the beginning of a long friendship between the two visionary artists. So yes, that's one thing I, I read more recently is that Salvador Dali and Disney were very, very good friends. I had no idea. I'm a big fan of some of Salvador Dali's works. In fact, he has a museum down in St. Petersburg, or I'm sorry, there's a museum dedicated to him and his work in St. Petersburg that I'm definitely gonna have to go see because I like some of his paintings, like the melting clocks and some of the other stuff that he does. Um, and it says, Dolly's idea for the story was inspired by a melancholy love song entitled Destino that Disney had purchased but never used for the animated feature film, The Three Caballeros, 1944. Uh, Walt teamed the Spanish artist with John Hench to help guide him through the mechanics of animation for several months with Hench creating some artwork for the film as well. The pre-production artwork of Dolly and Hench was rediscovered by Roy E. Disney in 1999 when he was working on Fantasia 2000. 
he later accompanied the finish the finishing and releasing of the film in 2003 that was shown several international film exhibitions and it says Hinch who was still working at the Walt Disney Company at the age of 95 consulted on the work and Dolly's wife loaned her late husband's notebooks on the film the Destino film plays on several screens in the main lobby that is designed to be an homage to the uh, Kalashin modernism, modernism style as well as in the rooftop Dahlia Lounge. That's pretty neat. Now I haven't seen the film though. Unless that may have been a temporary thing. We'll check that out one more time. Uh, the Dahlia Lounge on the 16th floor of the Grand Destino Tower is inspired by the Spanish surrealism and features a wall full of photos of Walt Disney with Salvador Dali for over the years. I've been up there only once and I didn't I didn't see that. Again, there's so much detail here. It's incredible. Dahlia Lounge is named after the heroine of the film, a young woman who struggles through uh, through the fluidity of time and unusual transformations to be united through destiny with her one true love. Dandelion imagery and the metal bell accents at one point in the film, she becomes clothed in the bell shadow all around the tower, including a massive mural on the wall, all drawn inspiration from the film and its heroine. That's amazing. And then Disney Imagineer David uh, Stofsik said that the tower pays homage to the Spanish origins of the stories of Mexico and the American Southwest already told at the resort. So it kind of ties everything together. Kind of like the rug in Big Lebowski, you know, because that rug really tied the room together, did it not? He said that the resort's 14-acre lake, Lago Dorado, ties it all together like the rug in Big Lebowski. And that the tower's ribbon pattern lines on its exterior, which are illuminated at night, represent water that flows through the building and into the lake. So right there, you can see the, the, iron, the patterns right there. It's designed like as if it were a waterfall. There's, there's the outer edge. There's where the water would be up there, and then it would come cascading over, and then all the way down the side of the building. And then out into the lake over here. How cool of a story is that, huh? So what we're going to do is we'll take a walk around the inside again. I'll show you some of the references to Dolly, meaning like a lot of the dandelion photos in here. I'm sorry, a lot of the dandelion paintings. Here, starting out, there's one of the, the dandelion paintings with the not so much of a hidden Mickey, that's pretty subtle there, but isn't that's pretty cool. Then there's also a painting of Walt and Mickey back here that's got a lot of Salvador Dali reference to it. And same with a lot of this tile work. One other thing I wanted to point out before we leave, I want to show you the Maya Grill. That's where the, uh, um, it's a really well themed restaurant, but I think it's changed over the years. I still love walking into here. And now that it's nighttime, it really illuminates this room up. This is the, the Maya Grill, one of the main feature restaurants here in the resort. But this was the Pepper Market Food Court at one point, and this was an old warehouse where individual food vendors have set up shops. So this changed. Um, like I said, it had seven different serving stations divided into three areas, Fire Temple near the Exhibit Cooking, the Water Temple, and the Sun Temple. And more recently, it's been rehabbed into El Mercado de Coronado to represent an open-air market, which that's what it sits as now. It's cool, but I would have loved to have seen it back in its, in its heyday. I'll have to try to find some photos of that. And right behind me is the convention center. I'm not obviously not going to be able to go into the convention center, but I'll show you a little bit. So down here is the Coronado Ballroom. This is the one I was referring to. It's got 60,214 square feet, which again makes it the largest in the southeastern United States. That's pretty cool. And all throughout this, this is all the convention center. Oh, they have special convention park tickets, so you can go enjoy the parks after the, after the convention's over. Aha, they do have half-day tickets. <laughs> And Twilight, I remember when they used to offer these regularly, like Twilight Park tickets used to be a big thing 
for all theme parks. Man, you imagine if they they still sold those for everybody? That'd be a big seller. And <laughs> if you're into press pennies, they do have some machines in here. Well, everybody, I think that's about gonna wrap this one up. Beautiful resort, though. Well, everybody, I hope you all enjoyed that full tour of Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. Again, this is one of my one of my more favorite hotels on property. So if you stayed here, let me know in the comments below or if you would like to stay here. And also, we're going to continue on with these vlogs as well. Let me know down in the comments which of the Walt Disney World or Universal Resorts would you like to see highlighted. Uh, ha happy to take a look at some comments and we'll, we'll start doing these a lot more often. So, again, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for your support. Once again, this has been the truth and it's been actual. I hope you all found this vlog mighty satisfactory. See ya.